It is time for us to check the forecast. It's time to bring in Pat Pagano. Pat, 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 how are you this morning? Fine, thank you. You feeling better this morning? I'm feeling, um, I, I got plenty of sleep yesterday. I went home uh, and slept off and on in between like 11 and 4, then got up and did my afternoon work uh, for the station on my in my studio at home, uh, and then uh, sat and watched a, a little uh, uh, the oh, uh, the Mandalorian is back streaming uh, again. Uh, so I watched uh, the first two episodes of that, and then I headed off to the bedroom and caught up on the rest of my sleep and got up without any problems at about 3.30, 3.45 this morning. And uh, I'm almost, I'll, I'll say I'm 90, 95%. You know, the only, I used to, I never understood this, but now I understand that at 68, uh, when you put in those extra long hours, uh, it really plays havoc with your system for about two or three days. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. I, uh, But like I said, the rebound time takes a little longer. It's a good thing I'm not an athlete. If I'm an athlete, I'd retire. <laughs> but well, I'm not going to retire. You have a job to do today, though. What? You have a job to do today. Uh-oh. What's that? Uh, they want you to head toward Pennsylvania to help them count the votes. Well, see, I, I was never good at math, so uh, I'd probably be the perfect person to do that. <laughs> you know, do you ever have, in, in, in high school, uh, and I, I had great grades except for algebra and geometry. Algebra and geometry, I just couldn't get. I just, you know, when it came to math, and I consider algebra and geometry math, I know it's a little bit of science too. I just didn't get it. It there's nothing you could have you could do for really? me outside of hit me in the head with a hammer. And finally, I had a great teacher, Mr. Draper, who said, "Marshall, I understand that for some reason, this just binds you up and tightens you up. So all you, I'm not going to call on you in class. Don't worry. I'm not going to because I don't want to embarrass you." He said, "But." So then they gave me extra work, and outside the classroom when I had a free period, if it was a library period, I would work with Mr. Bond or Mr. Draper and and get my assignments done and stuff like that uh, because they knew that for some reason I had a block against it, and it wasn't – I just – didn't get it, and so they, they, they took the extra time to make sure that I could pass those courses, uh, and uh, and understand, the, get a, have a basic understanding. It was just one of those things. I don't know. That's why I, I always wanted to become a meteorologist, and I figured, oh, I guess that field's out for me because <laughs> because of the math. Yeah, yeah you know, it's funny. I had problems. Uh, I remember having problems with algebra, and um, I went to summer school, and. Uh, by going to summer school, it clicked. Then the following year, geometry. And I had problems with geometry. And I'm thinking to myself, why can't I get this? I took myself to summer school again. And immediately I saw it. When I started realizing that all you have to do is memorize the theorems and everything will come to you. I was flying through. Um, I remember taking the geometry regions. And I think I got a 90 on it. Um, and and to this day, I understand it now. You know, and then Trig. And then when it got to college, you know, they, they started going with uh, analytic geometry and and calculus and the whole bit. It was, get, it was getting real tough. Real, real, real tough. Now the question is, do you, need, do you use it? Not in synoptic forecasting, you don't. If you're going into coding or analytic meteorology and things like that, you know, that you're going to develop models and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, certainly not in synoptic meteorology. So, but I did take all that junk. And um, talking about junk, well, we don't have any in the forecast. Um, this is probably turning out to be the nicest week uh, of fall. With sunshine, mid-60s today, 45 to 50 tonight. A party to mostly sunny, 70 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sunny, low 70s, and still fair on Monday. So, Marshall, this is your kind of weather. Well, I, I can, I'll, I'll actually get out and enjoy it a little bit today. and because <laughs> yeah, you'll be awake. I oh, bet exactly right. Well, some people, what... some people will argue with that, that with you, Pat, uh, that, that I'm never awake. 
Well, but... I mean, and that's it. Yeah, I uh, yesterday a friend of mine um, that moved in not far from here asked me if I'd go over and um, put up the curtain rods and, and the blinds. So I did that. And then I got back in time for my yoga class. And I did that. Um, and then last night I went to sleep early because I was not going to sit up uh, waiting and watching to see what was going to happen with the election because I knew it was going to be a long haul. And I was a little confused this morning because it said that uh, Biden had uh, 264 uh, electoral college votes and CNN said it was 253. Well, CNN is the only one that hasn't given uh, has it, that hasn't given has Arizo- given Arizona. Right. Everybody, was it Arizona? Ev- yeah, everybody else, the Associated Press, all writers, uh, all the other networks, and everybody else have given Arizona uh, to Joe Biden. So, okay. in theory, Biden only needs one more one more state. Uh, uh, and to- that could be that could be Nevada. It, it could be Nevada. It could be Georgia. It could be who knows what what it could be, but. Uh, uh, one more. One, well, you know, it's 2020, Pat. This is, you know, this election is not going to end easily. <laughs> That's a good point. You're right, Marshall. <laughs> yeah, right. It's uh, 2020. You're right. Uh, How, yeah, you're right. But you know, you know, it gets uh, because of the election and because of the threats of lawsuit and back and forth and everything. Uh, uh, it's so good that I don't watch TV. But I was thinking this morning. Uh, I had a dig to find out that 100,000 100, people were infected in the United States uh, yesterday with COVID-19. 100,000 people in one day infected with COVID-19. Uh, and they say it's the worst. Uh, and what we're finding out is, of course, our medical profession is, is handling it much better. It's still a risk to people that have other, other other things wrong with them. And the older you get, it's still a higher risk. But nobody knows the long-term effect of this. And that's the thing that sits in the back of my mind. Nobody knows the long-term effect if you get a case of COVID-19. Uh, and, and nobody knows the long-term effect. It looks like they've been they really they really handle people that notice it right away and come in and the death rate is still increasing but not a lot um so the death rate is down quite a bit but still the unknown about this disease is more than and and so that's the problem with elections and stories like that it over it overshadows other yeah, stories that that yeah. that people should know about i agree i agree because i noticed uh, also uh you know that even in new york state uh, things are, are on an uptick. And, you know, y- you kind of wonder. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with Halloween, but at, what's going to happen with Thanksgiving? Well, here's what when, they don't like. What they you know, don't that's got me that. worried because now I'm not just talking about family yeah. gatherings, Marshall, but what about, you know, uh, people traveling? Uh, you know, to come and see their families. Well, there's that. You know, in Connecticut, uh, we've got a, a dangerous rise. But in right. Col- little old Columbia County, New York, which, which is right next door to us, they have a boom going on that is so scary with COVID-19 for a small little county. Um, it's it's and, and you know what? They released the information on it, and it's this time it's not the elderly. It's a boom among... Uh, uh, people that are in between uh, 18 and 50. It's it's very little of it now is, is, is dealing with senior citizens. Isn't that interesting? And, you know, that's funny you brought that up. Did you also hear that this virus has mutated? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's, and and yeah. mink, mink are uh, um, in in Sweden. And now, in, I don't know, they say Utah or, or um, Nevada, uh, all the mink there. Are, are dying and they're and they're catching this m- mutation. Yeah, it's a, it was that's what viruses do. They mutate uh, and then they, they evolve and they develop. But it's just, but so the election is obscuring that news and probably tons of other news that is newsworthy, and and the networks have sucked themselves into this. There's nothing they can yeah. do now. Uh, they have to cover. They have to cover the election. They have to, and so now everything is tw- even on even. Uh, on, on our news here, which is uh, the BBC, that one of the lead stories is what out of the BBC? This is the British Broadcasting. Is the American election? Yes. That's the lead story there uh, on our NPR newscast. The the election, and and yeah, it's it's an important story. But 
there's other things going on in 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 the world uh, that are just as important. So, well, you know what I think is interesting because a number of people that I have hit into said, "Just wait for November fourth, and the virus will be gone." Well, it's gone because we're talking about November fourth. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And That's I'm saying right. to myself, how how could you, you know, what are you looking at the the world with rose colored glasses? I don't. Know I mean, I don't look know. what's going on in in, in England and and uh, in Europe with the lockdowns. Yeah, it, what I don't understand about the election coverage, especially right now. Okay, it's going to be days probably, unless something really weird happens before we find out who the winner is going to be. Okay, it's going to probably be days. Uh, before all the data is released, uh, that, that can make, uh, unless, like I said, unless lightning strikes and it happens today, which I don't know, but take this time where we all know that it's everything's sitting idly and we're waiting for things to be counted, and don't do election twenty four hours a day. Put in some other stuff, and if something happens during the election, then break in. Then break in and then start your that coverage all over again. But I agree. I, I, I'm so glad I've got streaming services. I, I, I'm so glad because I do not have to sit and get depressed uh, at my house. I can I can actually go into a fantasy world and watch a movie because uh, I can't go to a movie theater, so I can, so I can stream it at home. So, oh, I I I just don't understand the old way of covering news. I'm sorry, was the better way, uh, where you, the news that was important. And it was most current, led the list, and then the other stuff followed up. Yeah. It's not the way it is now. No, it's all changed. You're yeah. absolutely right. But yeah, that, it, 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 the, you know. the only reason you don't hear COVID-19 is because of the election. Once the election's over, you'll hear COVID-19. <laughs> right, right. Well, because of they're thinking along the lines that right now most people are interested in the election, but they can't, they, they have to – have to be ridiculous to think that people are not interested in COVID um, because um, it's all around us and it's spiking, you know, which is, you know, Fauci said, and a lot of people, you know, rip him apart too, but I'm sorry, he does a very good job. He said that going into the fall season, uh, the numbers had to be low. I think he said less than 10,000. Uh, and he only said uh, last week that we are not in good standing. We are going into this fall season in very, very bad shape. And, of course, the other one, whatever her name is, what is it, Deborah something? Uh, yeah. yeah. She, said, she said we're going into the worst uh, part of this pandemic. And, well, thank you very much. I mean, we were told that we would have a vaccine by October. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and even if we did, um, I, I would say 75% of us, wouldn't have had the vaccine, you know, or been vaccinated. You know, that all goes to the front line people uh, first. So I think it's going to be a long, long time before um, before we, we all are able to share in a vaccine. So until that time, everybody has to be di di uh, diligent. You have to wear that mask. You have to keep your distance. Uh, wash your hands. Um, this is not a joke. Not a joke at all. All right. It's uh, one of those things. Well, Pat, you and I will discuss more worldly things tomorrow morning. Yeah, because there's nothing to talk about weather-wise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Pat, have a good day. You too. Bye, Marshall. Pat Picano this morning in the Weather Center with a check on our tri-state forecast here on Robin Hood Radio.